So modern JavaScript frameworks like React, Vue, Svelte, Solid, Quick, and the other 786 that dropped this week, they all try to do something different. React gave us components in a virtual DOM, Vue made reactivity feel natural, Svelte said to heck with the runtime and compiles everything away. Solid tracks fine-grained updates and Quick's trying to pause and resume the entire app. But underneath all of their cool syntactic sugar and shiny features, they all revolve around one weird trick, if you will. Reactive UI updates. But what are reactive UI updates? It's the idea that instead of you telling the browser how to change the UI step by step, you just declare what the UI should look like based on some state. And the framework figures out how to make it happen in the most efficient way possible. Which is uh, very nice, to say the least. Because back in the early 2000s, in the days of vanilla JS before JavaScript frameworks even existed, you had to do everything manually. If you wanted to update the UI, you had to go find the element, change its inner text, maybe add a class, maybe remove one, maybe re-render an entire section just to show one new item. And if your state changed in two places, you would have to update both and you'd get weird flickers or stale UI or that one div that refuses to update until you refresh the page and still only does so after you've been crying a little bit. Okay, I don't know if that was a requirement, but it was still part of the process. So yeah, to build anything decent, you had to query the DOM for elements, you had to manually track your app state somewhere, you had to write imperative code to reflect every state change in the UI, and you had to do it while blasting Linkin Park and Winamp wearing cargo shorts and debugging an Internet Explorer 6. You had to do all of this, especially that last point, or else it would fall out of sync, show outdated data, and you wouldn't even know until your user emailed you or your product manager slacked you with a screenshot and passive aggressive, huh, at midnight. Except Slack didn't even exist. So yeah, we were uh, desperate for a better way. And by we, I don't mean me, I was like 10. But enter jQuery, the hero we needed, the hero we got. All of a sudden, you could write one line like this, which meant no more document get element by ID, no more cross browser headaches, no more crying into your Netscape. jQuery gave us power, it gave us simplicity, and for a hot minute we thought it was the future. It felt like the future. But here's the problem, it's still imperative. You were still in charge of when things updated, where they updated, and all the same baggage as before, just in a simpler form factor. Your state could change, and if you forgot to call your jQuery update function somewhere, now your UI is out of sync again. And honestly, what used to be a nice, clean JavaScript code base is now a spaghetti forest of dot hide, dot show, dot add class, dot remove class, and the occasional existential crisis. So jQuery allowed you to manipulate the DOM faster and easier. But Angular 1.0 thought, what if you didn't have to think about the DOM at all? Their solution, whether you like it or not, was just, screw it, let's watch everything all the time. Angular's dirty checking meant the framework would go through every single variable on your page, every time something happened, and check if anything changed. Listen, this was a great idea for, you know, the thousand of to-do apps that we made, but not so great when you're building a real dynamic website. Because apps got slow, as you could imagine, real slow. Again, it checked everything. And developers started realizing we didn't just need a way to notice changes, we needed a way to react to changes. Just like you need to react to changes happening in 2025 with AI writing more and more of your code. Because instead of just reacting to UI problems, now we're reacting to security problems. And that's why I'm partnering with Sneak, a developer security platform that helps devs find, fix, and track vulnerabilities in their code and why you should check out Sneak Launch 2025 happening on May 28th. It's a free virtual event talking about how AI is changing app development and what that means for security. You'll hear about how to handle emerging AI threats, so not just your code written by AI or others' code written by AI, but people utilizing AI to scale security for AI-generated code, adapt your workflow to all of this, and build on a solid AppSec governance. Because whether you're building with React, shipping LLM features, or just letting AI autocomplete half of your code base, the risk is real. It always has been, but now more than ever. And there are two sessions of this event, one at 10 a.m. and one at 6 p.m., so there's no excuse regardless of your work schedule or time zone. 
just hit the link in the description to register for Sneak Launch 2025. Again, happening on May 28th. It's free and it's for devs. Big changes are coming. Make sure you're ready for them. So yeah, developers didn't just want to notice the changes, they wanted to react to the changes and enter, you guessed it, React. In React's answer, re-render everything, but do it in memory first. Instead of updating the actual DOM, every time something changes, React builds a virtual copy of the DOM. The virtual DOM figures out what changed by comparing the new one to the old one and only updates what's necessary. This is a giant improvement over dirty checking, but it still has overhead because you're diffing entire trees. And that's where other frameworks came in and we're like, what if we didn't do that either? Like Svelte, Svelte compiles it away. Or in other words, they do all of this at compile time. So during the build step, Svelte analyzes your code and wires everything up. It already knows that this H1 tag depends on name. So when name changes, Svelte updates just that DOM node. No virtual DOM, no diffing, just precise compiled DOM updates. But there was a trade-off, and that is you lost some flexibility, but in return, you gained speed and simplicity. And Vue took a different approach from both of them. Instead of signals or compilations, it wraps your state in proxies. So when you access a property, Vue tracks it. When you update it, Vue knows exactly what to re-render. It's like Vue is spying on your variables, but in a helpful way. You get the reactivity you want, but without the virtual DOM diffing overhead. Just efficient DOM patching based on what's actually used. And Solid skips virtual DOM entirely as well, but takes a signal-based approach. Every reactive piece of state in Solid is a signal. When that signal changes, only the DOM nodes that depend on it update. Nothing more. Which I actually really like. It's, it's insanely fast and honestly, pretty elegant. You change a signal and it's like flipping a light switch. Only the light responds. And then there's Quick, which is like, uh, what if we never ran our app until the user did something? Because Quick serializes your app on the server, ships zero JavaScript, and only resumes execution right where it left off once the user interacts with it. It's still reactive, but now it's optimized for hydration performance and cold starts, which is ideal for edge rendering or massive apps that need to feel instant. So with all of this being said, why reactive UI updates? Because all of these frameworks, no matter how different their approach, are trying to solve the same problem, keeping your UI in sync with your state and doing all of that efficiently, reliably, and decoratively. Reactive UI updates are the foundation that makes that possible. It removes manual DOM sync. It lets you focus on what the UI should look like instead of having to do every single thing manually. And it scales from counters to full blown applications. They all have different philosophies and different trade offs, and some are faster than others, but every modern JavaScript framework is reactive because doing it manually sucked. <laughs> and we are never going back. I hope you enjoyed that video and you got a little more look into some JavaScript frameworks. I think understanding where we came from in terms of technology and, and kind of breaking down those abstraction layers really help us be better developers as a whole. So if you agree with that, check out one of these two videos. Maybe they'll do the same or wait for my next video by subscribing to the channel, like this video, and I'll see y'all in the next one.